and make a way through. Make way through the water. Walk me through the fire. Do what you are. Do what you are, baby. A famous boy. What you are, baby. Shut the mouths of liars. Bring trouble. Exceedingly, God of 
Oh, let's give God praise, church. God, we glorify you. We magnify you tonight, God. You can do exceedingly, God, abundantly all that we can think or oh, imagine, God. You are the unstoppable King, God. The omnipresent Lord. The omnipotent King, God. Amen. So how many is glad to be in the house of God? Oh, what a powerful presence of God we have with us this evening. When I open up our service in prayer, you maybe know someone that is unsaved, someone that is sick in their body. How many know we serve a miracle working God tonight? A God that can break chains tonight. Want to lift up? Our pastor, Pastor Hector Ortiz, his wife, Sister Nicole, the Mitchell Spring congregation, that God must continue to breathe upon our church. We also want to remember the workers on the field. also want to remember the missionary that went out to the nation of Accra, Ghana, Pastor Christopher Zondeberg, his wife, Sister Isa, their children there in the nation of Ghana. We also want to lift up the leader of our fellowship, Pastor Gerrit Mitchell, and his wife, Sister Lisa. We also want to lift up the leader of South Africa, Pastor Jonathan Heinberg, and his wife, Sister Rachel. We also want to lift up this revival tonight. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Lamont Malros. As you bring the forth the word tonight, once again, the word fitly spoken in this season. If you have a need tonight, you can just signify by raise of a hand, knowing we serve a God that supplies our every need. As we subside, Brother Carlo will take us before the throne of grace. Let's pray, church. God, I thank you once again, God, for your divine grace and your mercy in this place. God, we ask you uh, that you will redeem the lives of men uh, and women tonight in this place uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, tonight, God, we thank you for your presence in our service, God. God, I pray tonight for my pastor, his wife, God, keep your hand upon them, Father God. God, so they can continue doing what they're doing in our nation, God. God, every prayer request tonight, God, we lift it up to you, God. God, the service, God, I pray, God, you touch Pastor Melrose, God. Breathe upon his lips, God, in Jesus' name. No man and woman shall leave this place the same. Amen. Hey man, you can greet the person next year as we sing that song, My Redeemer Lives. Said I know. tonight my redeemer loves for our announcements tonight tomorrow night once again in the house of god 6 30 pray 7 30, uh, uh, 7 30 our service uh, amen and then also again wednesday night as well remember revival revival invite people out uh, let people come and hear the gospel get people get healed this week amen um, also i want to remind you for our easter Amen. Easter, Holy Communion services, Sunday morning. And then this evening we'll be having our Easter play. I almost said Christmas play. Our Easter play. How many is excited for that? That will be at 5 p.m. That's all the announcements. Let's give God a clap offering as our pastor make his way tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I could have the ushers come this evening, we'll receive the evening tithe and offering. Again, I really want to encourage you. We know we have our Sunday Morning service is going to be coming. We'll have communion that Sunday morning, but I will encourage you, both Sunday morning and Sunday evening, bring out a sinner, bring out someone who's unsaved, doesn't know the Lord, and I, listen to me, God has the power to save. Can you say amen? So again, um, our play will be taking place on Sunday night, our Easter play. Bring, invite family and friends um, that don't know Jesus Christ. I'm not interested in church people, amen. I want sinners, can you say amen? amen. Bring sinners, bring the unsaved, those who don't know the Lord. Bring them, and I assure you, God will save them and God will help them, amen. You give tonight, 
Out of a giving heart again, we thank God so much, each and every one of you. Your giving, your faithfulness, your liberality to God and the things of God you give this evening out of a giving heart. Amen. All ten, lift your voice, bless your offering tonight. Standing here, standing here, in your presence, thinking of the good things you waiting here patiently, just to hear. Sing holy, you're righteous, you're faithful. The Savior, He loves, Redeemer, and Friend. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
And my brother, would you be out there spending your life for green paper? When you knew you had it all already, when you knew you were a king, don't you know you're a king? Well, the best I can offer is to tell you the truth. Mercy changed everything for me and you, cause they don't really tell us what we do need to know. First Peter 2 and 6, a blessing for sure, it's a power to the chosen people, who at one point wasn't viewed as an equal. Here's our chosen people, royal priesthood, yeah. And then when we call down of the darkness, darkness into the marvelous light, oh, oh, oh. do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Yeah. Once we were the people, now we are the people. Now we are the people. Mitchell, please stand up. Do you know who you are? Yeah, yeah. Royalty. Come on, royalty, royalty, yeah. Called out by God. Chosen for God, royalty, kings and queens, royal, yeah, yeah, look, look at, at yourself, yourself. Take, your take your throne, baby, you're royalty, lift your head, come back home, brother, you're royalty, power to the chosen people, who at one point wasn't viewed as an equal, Here's our chosen people, royal priesthood, royalty, royalty, yeah, royal, royal. How many believe that? Royalty, kings and queens in his throne room, yeah. Power to the chosen people. Who at one point wasn't viewed as an equal. Here's our chosen people, royal priesthood, giving praise. Hallelujah. Royalty. Royalty. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Hallelujah. Royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to take a dip into the altitude a little bit. I want to come down and talk to you about life. Hallelujah. How many live life? Amen. Amen. If you're dead, raise your hand. I want to talk about life tonight. I believe God's going to help us. Open your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 6 tonight. Do you have the picture for me? If you have it, you can put it up on the screen. What you're looking at is you're looking at Grand Prix cars, Formula One, whatever you want to call them. And the car in the bottom with the blue circle and the number one, that is a position. In racing, that position is called pole position. You earn the right to take the first spot in these races by qualifying with the fastest time. You have to run the track and whoever runs the track in the fastest time, when it's time to race, they are given the pole position. This is the best position. You have the best opportunity to win the race. Are you with me tonight? I want to talk to you tonight about life and its pole position. Out of 2 Kings chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 5 through 7 tonight. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, but as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe had fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it is borrowed. And the man of God said, Where did it fall? So he showed him the place. Then he cut off a stick and he threw it in there and he made the iron float. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. And the young man reached out with his hand and he took it. There's a young man by the name of Miguel Nijorf. He is a Polish-Argentinian chess 
grandmaster. I've played chess for quite a long time and I've been very fascinated by chess. And he had this commentary about another grandmaster who in the chess world is arguably one of the greatest to ever play. And yes, he is an American. His name is Bobby Fischer. He said this about Bobby Fischer and actually this is what I built my entire message around. He said this, Fisher doesn't think of chess as most of us do. We grandmasters. Fisher has all of these positions from games that were played so long ago. You got to understand, chess is two, uh, nearly 300 years old. He doesn't study how to win certain positions. Rather, Fisher is more interested in how a person lost a certain position. Which move was crucial for him losing that game? And Fisher memorizes these losing moves that convert a holdable position into a losing position. And so because he does this, Miguel goes on to say it's very difficult to surprise Fisher to enter such a position that would not be holdable. So while everybody is studying the best moves to win, Fisher is studying where it went wrong. He's mastered every losing position. So when people make a mistake, he's not surprised. Let me tell you something tonight. The devil learns from your mistakes. Even if you don't. The devil learns from your mistakes. Even if you don't learn. Just because you're a knucklehead don't mean that he's not. I would often ask people who are struggling to take a trip down memory lane. I counsel people all the time. And my question would be similar to this. Do you remember when you were on fire for God? And they nod their head, yes, yes, Pastor, I remember. And I said, well, what were you doing? Oh, man, I was coming to prayer. I was doing this. I was doing that. And so my answer to that would be, well, go and do that again. Whatever you were doing when you were on fire, you need to go back and do it again. See, that's the winning position. But over time, I realized that I'm only giving them half good information. Because I'll tell you about the winning position all day long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what about how you lost the position in the first place? See, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. Oh, but we're going to talk about it tonight. This is encouraging because it reminds us who we are and what we need to get back to. I, I get it, you know. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift and we can go on. But as good as that is, where I believe it's incomplete is we've only discussed the winning position. We seldom speak of the losing position. In other words, we never talk about where and how we lost our place of dominion. And if we don't go and re-examine where we lost it, we'll become a repeat offender. I don't know about you, friend, but I want victory. But I don't want victory one time. I want victory all the time. Hallelujah. I got some victory folks in here. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm in the right church. Amen. First of all, let's talk about the losing position. Our text speaks of a young man who is working on expanding the territory in order to advance the kingdom of God. Second Kings chapter six, verse one and two. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, this place that we live in now is too small for us. That's a good problem. Please let us go to the Jordan. Let every man take a beam from there and let us make there another place where we may dwell. And Elisha said, go. Hallelujah. This place is too small. Pastor, uh, we need to renovate the building. Uh, we need to make it larger. Uh, this is expansion. Uh, this is growth. Uh, this is dominion. Uh, amen. That's called revival. And so they begin to do this because they're after one thing and one thing only, and that's fruitfulness. Did you know that was the first commandment? God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful 
and multiply. You shall have dominion. See, that's, that's our portion, church. Amen. That ain't even in my notes. I just thought I'd throw that out there for you for free. Amen. That's who you are. You're supposed to have dominion. You're not supposed to be bound to anything. You're not supposed to be beholden to anything. He said, have dominion. Subdue the earth. That's who we're supposed to be. And the reason why the world is in chaos is because we forgot who we are. But anyway, Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 54, verse 2, said, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen the cords and strengthen your stakes. And this is what they begin to do. This is what ministry is all about. We are not given a specific time frame of this work or the longevity, but we can only assume that this activity didn't take just one day. They said, let's go down there and get a beam. Amen. They had to go down. They had to chop these big trees and then they had to cut them down to size and bring them back and begin to build a larger place. How many know that don't take one day? That takes time. It takes time to build a church. It takes time to build a marriage. It takes time to build finances. It takes time to build good decisions. Having said that, if we look a little closer, we can see the beginning stages of said losing position here. Second Kings six, verse three and four. Then one said, please consent with your servants. And so Elisha said, I'll go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. So here we see them cutting trees at the Jordan. We know that the text said that this young man was chopping down a tree when the axe head flew off into the river. What the Bible does not tell us was when the axe head became loose. It just said it fell off. How many know things just don't fall off? <laughs> you don't wake up one morning and say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go backslide today. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Somewhere the axe head got loose. See, here's the deception in the losing position. Number one, they needed to enlarge. That's a good thing. Number two, they needed timber for building a larger facility. And so they all, each to a man, went and gathered uh, lumber for it. That's a good thing. Number three, they needed to chop trees uh, for the eventual building. This is good. We need lumber. We need laborers. Uh, we need to build. So is it possible to be doing the right thing but working with faulty equipment. See, the axe head can serve as two different things here. I told you, you need to put your thinking cap on tonight. I just had to butter you up and call you royal first. It can serve as two different things. Either this axe head is the ministry or the axe head is you. One of them's loose. So we're going to look at both of them. That's both with two F's. What we can see from the text is the axe head did fall off. But before this happened, it had to be loose or ill-fitted before use. It can also be surmised that this wasn't checked before starting or it was ignored and disregarded as important. I don't know how many times, that's why I don't have any hair today when I'm working with disciples and they don't check stuff in advance. They wait for it to blow up. And my phone blows up. Hey, Pastor, we got a problem. What's the problem? Well, this happened, that happened. Did you check it? Sorry, I just had a moment. My neck feels a lot better. Thank you. Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. Paul is speaking to the church in Colossae. He says to Archippus, uh, he says, take heed to the ministry which you have received uh, and fulfill it. See, this is when the axe head is the ministry. He warns a certain teacher in the church of Colossae. He needs to take heed to the ministry. You know, there's not a lot of details, but what we do know for sure is that up to this point, Archippus wasn't doing this. He wasn't taking heed to the ministry. Why would Paul tell him to do that? Because he was lacking. Why does your pastor tell you to do stuff? Because you probably ain't doing it. 
They say man has the ability to retain 33% of everything they hear. That's why we have service three times a week. Hopefully we can get 99% by the end of the week. So in other words, when it comes to Archippus, his ministry wasn't tight. He was, he was taking things for granted. They, they weren't cared for, unattended, uh, lacking fruit. I've seen people go on outreach and pray with nobody. And then come back and say, hey man, how was outreach? Man, it was good. How, how is it good? Nobody got saved. I'm old school, man. We used to stay out there until folks got saved. Oh, but pastor, outreach is two hours. No, outreach is until people get saved. Th that's kind of the point. We outreach and we tell people about Jesus so that they would get saved. I don't know about you, but does it bother you when you're not fruitful? When's the last time you led somebody to Jesus Christ? When, I mean, when do you even think about that? Oh, I'm talking to all y'all. Amen. Ladies, don't be, don't, don't be flicking your hair and, and scrolling on your phone. I'm talking to you too, sweetie. Amen. Evangelism is your responsibility. Just like my man is called to preach. No, baby, we launch couples. We launch couples. You right out there in the street just like he is. Come on, somebody. When's the last time you prayed with somebody? You know, because I get nervous. I'm like, wait a minute. It's been too long. I need to. But when your ministry isn't tight. See, ministry isn't a right. It's a privilege. Notice in the scripture that the ministry was received in the Lord. This is God's mercy. We didn't earn it. God gave it to us. And at least the brother was honest. He said, alas, master, the edge of the axe was borrowed. In other words, it's not mine. Can I tell you, friend, the ministry is not yours. It was given to you by God. See, because ministries don't fall apart on their own. Hallelujah. This is where we need to find the losing position. We do so by asking questions and getting honest answers. In other words, we need to get real with ourselves. If you're a Bible study leader in here, for example, how much time is devoted to prayer for the Bible study? Are you putting your lesson together the night before? Well, then don't expect anything to happen. How many people are in the music ministry? Maybe it's song service or you're in a band and you just get up here and just slap something together. You can't do that. The ministry is not tight. Hello, somebody. World evangelism pledges come and they go. And you're like, man, I want to be a part of what God is doing. Well, you can't write a bad check and talk about the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's got to be tight. Your wife will ask you the question, brother, where are we going? Don't be asking me no question, lady. Sit down. Woman, I run this. Well, yeah, but we don't know where you're running. Where are we going? What are we doing? What is your direction? Is the ministry, is what you're doing, is it tight? Is it together? Are you prepared? Have you thought it out? Have you put things together? And as this thing begins to tank, and as you enter into the losing position, you need to find out why. If you are not fruitful tonight, you need to ask yourself, why? If you are still in debt, no matter how much you tithe, you need to find out why if you are following up on converts um, and they are not sticking uh, you need to find out why you need to talk to pastor uh, you need to talk to the lord if any man lack wisdom the bible says uh, let him ask god i'm in a losing position and i must get this fixed something is loose beloved now let's look at when the axe head is you because the ministry can be together but you can be jacked up see God is the only supervisor that'll fire you and let you keep working so let's talk about let's talk about your axe head Amen. Matthew 16, verse. Oh, we, we shouting the victory last night. Y'all still love me? Okay. 
Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, and I also say to you that you are Peter, a pebble, a stone. And on this rock, on the revelation of what you said, Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Jeremiah 18, verse 3 and 4, where we got our name from. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there the potter was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. So listen, beloved, God will build his church, make no mistake. He has called us to worship him. He's called us to do his will. This is what makes up the body of Christ. Now, having said that, we also must understand uh, that the Lord is working uh, with imperfect people. He molds and shapes us into his image uh, as we surrender to him. That means you're going to have to surrender. If God, he's working that wheel uh, and he wants you to be a bowl, don't get mad. I, I wanted to be a vase. No, you be what God told you to be. Do you imagine Noah building the ark? He said, you're going to use gopher wood and you're going to do this. It's going to be this big. It's going to be that. And then Noah said, well, uh, wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute. I got a question. Do we have to use gopher wood? You know, because I really like yellow pine. Can we use some of that? You know, I got some cherry oak in the back. Can we use some of that? No, this is how you're going to make it. You're going to make it exactly the way I told you to make it. Well, you know, I, I want to make my own ark. Do we have to call it an ark? Can we call it a vessel? But listen to me, if Noah would have built it his way, he would have died. See, that's what living for God is all about. You're building it God's way so that you can live. What you're building will save your life. But when you're loose, when you're loose, when you're ill-fitted, we begin to make decisions with our emotions rather than God's word. He molds and shapes us into his image. But there's times where he calls us to surrender and we stall. The Bible says lot lingered. Have you ever did not want to go somewhere? So you just walking around the house wasting time? Where are my keys? They're in your hand. Where are my keys? Your husband's in the car. But beep, 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 beep. Huh? This is a good spot where the teenagers can pay attention. You, didn't, you don't even want to come to church. They're already, in the, they're already in the quantum. They're waiting on you. And you walking around. Oh, no, I forgot my phone. Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot. You're lingering. You're stalling. You need to surrender. You need to surrender and do what God told you to do. Just because you're doing the right thing doesn't mean that you're being who God wants you to be. There are hard issues, mindsets, character flaws, traditions uh, that must be dealt with uh, because you are in danger of losing your edge. And so how do we arrive here? Well, one way is we begin to justify our behavior because uh, we are doing good things for God. Hey, I go to church. I'm here. I'm dressed. Uh, yeah, but your heart is not here. I'm doing what God told me to do, but are you doing it with a right heart? One of the people that we despise in the Bible is the elder brother. Did you know that while the prodigal was out blowing his brains out and doing all these nasty things that he was doing in Luke 15, the elder brother was up every morning. The elder brother was out in the field. The elder brother was never late. He was on time. He was working the fields. He was doing everything the father wanted him to do. But as soon as the prodigal came home, we saw the real. So just because you're doing the right thing, doesn't mean that this is right. Somewhere, the axe head is loose. 1 Samuel 15, verse 10 through 13, still bothers me to this day. The word of the Lord came to the prophet Samuel said, I greatly regret making Saul king. He has turned his back from following me. He has not performed my commandments. And it grieves Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told that Saul went to Carmel. And indeed, he set up a monument for himself. You know you're in trouble. Listen to me, pastors. Your pastor didn't launch you out there so you could set up a monument for yourself. 
I just thought I'd throw that out there for free. Amen. Go hard or go home. Amen. He has gone on around, passed down to Gilgal. Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. No, you didn't. And you move on down to verse 19, 1 Samuel 15, verse 19. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoiler and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Saul tells Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. What's wrong with you? You know darn good and well you did the exact opposite of what God told you to do. How dare you stand before the man of God and tell him otherwise? He said kill everybody. Kill all the uh, Amalekites. Uh, don't spare anything. And what did they do? They went out to war. Check. They killed the whole army. Check. But they spared the king and they took the spoil. They disobeyed. See, when you half obey, that's disobedience. Amalek, if you do your own study, Amalek means flesh. He spared the king of the flesh. He's supposed to kill him. He was supposed to kill him and he was supposed to kill the king's wife, the queen. And he didn't. We know Samuel, if you read your Bible, Samuel cut, hacked Agag the king to pieces. But there's no recording of where the queen was. And many scholars believe that she was pregnant. Because hundreds of years later, during the time of Esther, Haman rises to power. Haman is an Agagite. So the seed remained. Haman could have destroyed all of Israel. Read the book of Esther. If Saul would have handled his business like he was supposed to. See, when you don't deal with your flesh, oh, it may not mess with you tonight. Oh, but years down the road, it will manifest itself in your children uh, and in your ministry uh, and in your marriage. Uh, you better deal with it, friend. You better deal with it. It's a powerful thought if you can digest that. If they would have just took care of business. And I can go on and on and on. If, if, if he would have never messed with that girl, Hagar, if Abraham would have never messed with her, we wouldn't be dealing with Ishmael. Dealing with Ishmael tonight. Bombs are going off in Hamas. Think about the decisions that you make. Think about the loose, uh, how you lost your edge. Uh, and think of the seeds uh, that you're planting. You mean to tell me you can look a Limelech in, uh, in the face and say, hey man, if you leave, not only are you going to die, but so are your sons. Lot, you better stay with Abraham. You better stay. Don't you go to Sodom and Gomorrah. I do whatever I want to. Has incest with his own daughters. And Moab and the Ammonites live today. They're fighting over the Hermuz Canal as we speak. We're talking thousands of years later. What are you doing? Is the axe head loose? It's just loose. Don't I? I, don't, I, can, I can still use it, but it's loose. I'm, I'm still saved. I go to church, but it's loose. I still lift my hands and sing songs, but are you carnal? Are you devoted? Where did the axe head fall, beloved? And so we don't think about that until it's too late. See, all it takes for us is to be off one degree from the voice of God. And before you know it, we are years down the road, miles away from his will. See, the vision of our church and fellowship and the will of God is so clear. But once we become loose and unstable, I have a question, Pastor. Why do we do what we do? You understood everything when you were, when you were on key. But see, see time, see, and things get loose. We got to tighten that thing down. Judges chapter 16, verse 19 through 20. It says, she lulled him to sleep. Talking about Delilah. <laughs> I got a girl in my church named Delilah. She's a good girl, though. 
I tease her fiance all the time, say, man, whatever you do, don't lay down on her lap. <laughs> she lulled him to sleep on her knees and she called for a man to have his head shaved. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. The Palestinians, I mean, the Philistines, it's the same word. Yeah, Palestine is just Latin for Philistine. It's the same thing. The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke. He said, I will go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. You're in big trouble when you live life and you don't know the difference between being in the will or being in the presence of God and not being in the That's a dangerous place to live, baby. That's dangerous. Low to sleep by the world's appeal. Low to sleep by bitterness or envy, strife, jealousy, money. The list goes on and on. Are you sleeping tonight? Only to rise up and not know that you've lost your edge. So either the axe head is the ministry you're a part of or the axe head is you. But tonight, we need to look at the losing position and we need to get back to the winning position. The pole position. Somewhere we got to snap out of the fog of religion that we found ourselves in. So how do we do this? Amen. Because I can tell you what's wrong, but let, let, let's talk about what's right. We need to understand that all is not lost. Amen. It's not over. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We make some boneheaded decisions. Come on, somebody. I told my guys in, in, in serious men's years ago, and I tell them all the time, listen, stupid is undefeated. It's undefeated. Oh, talk to me now. Talk to me. Amen. All y'all up in the balcony. I hope y'all can hear me. L listen to me. This will save your life. Stupid is undefeated. Don't be fighting stupid. Don't deal with it. Just trust in the Lord. The Lord said, uh, the Lord will fight for you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Get out of the ring with stupid. You will lose every time. Don't do it. There is still a miracle that awaits us if we do what this young man did in our text. Trust me, to regain a winning position in Christ, it's going to take a miracle. Let's look at our text again. 2 Kings 6, 5 through 7. As one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. He cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? Brother, where did things go wrong? When did you start drinking again? What led to that decision that caused you to smoke? What led to that decision that caused you to do this? Where did it fall? And I love this boy. He said, It's right here. He showed him. And he cut off a stick. The man of God, he threw it in to the water, causing the iron to float. That is a miracle. Then he told him to pick it up for himself. So he reached out with his hand and he took it. So what did he do to get right? Once he realized what the problem was, the first thing he did was he cried out to headship. That's the first thing he did. See, when we get in trouble, we talk to everybody in the church but the pastor. The pastor is always the last one to know. He cried out. Listen, your pastor can't help you if he don't know what's going on. Amen. I know we're all cool and everything and y'all think we walk on water and we don't do anything wrong. Listen, we cannot read minds. He cried out to headship. Number two, he showed his leader where the axe head fell. Don't dance around the issue. Do us a favor. Quit telling your pastor what you think he wants to hear. Tell him the truth. You know what, pastor, the truth is I'm an idiot. I did a boneheaded thing. I know I shouldn't have went there. I know I shouldn't have clicked on that site. That's my fault. I told myself over and over not to go down to that liquor store because I know what's in there. And I went in there anyway, pastor. Don't dance around the issue. Well, you know, I just got some problems and God is dealing with me and God is dealing with me. You're not a deck of cards. God ain't dealing with you. <laughs> Tell
tell the truth. Remember the question I asked at the beginning. What were you doing when you were on fire? Well, the second question is, where did you fall? Where did you fail? In other words, what we're doing or who were you with when things begin to go south? Amen. Jesus gets to the point. He said, you're going to have living water. She said, give me this living water. We talked about it all night last night. Here's the part I didn't tell you. Jesus said, go call your husband then. See, he cut to the chase, didn't he? She said, well, I have no husband. He said, oh, well, well, praise God, at least you told the truth. Because the last five brothers you was with, you was married to them, and the one you living with now ain't your husband. She said, ooh, I perceive that you're a prophet. God gets to the point. Adam and Eve, uh, they're in the garden, loving life, uh, and here comes the snake. There's always a snake. And the snake is always willing to talk to you, dear. Took of the fruit, she ate it, gave it to Adam standing. The brother just standing there ain't saying nothing. I got a bone to pick with Adam. They find out they're naked, they hide themselves. They come out, we were naked, and so we hid ourselves. And God cuts right to the chase. Who told you? Who were you talking to? Who were you talking to that told you something outside of my will? This young man showed where the axe head fell. And the third thing he did was he reached out and he took the axe head for himself. Now, you're going to have to use your imagination. Imagine this floor. Well, it's already blue, so let's just say that's water. And the tree's right here. He's chopping. I'm, I'm, I'm left-handed. Whoa. It's right there. Breaks off. Elijah breaks off the stick. Throws it into the water. Axe head floats. The axe head don't float out of the water and come on the bank. You got to get down into the water and pick it up for yourself. You got to get down into the nitty gritty. Amen. Deliverance is not over there. You know how people, you know how people raise their hand, but they don't come to the altar. I'm going to get saved back. No, 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 baby. You got to come down into the water. See, the axe head is over here. Deliverance is at the altar. Deliverance is up here. It, it ain't way back over there. That brother got down there, got wet, and grabbed the axe head and took it for himself. That is personal responsibility. If you want to regain the winning position, you got to go get it for yourself. The five foolish versions, our lamps are getting ready to go out. Give us some of your oil. And the most powerful words in the kingdom of God next to Jesus is no. They said no. I said half of y'all free right there. Amen. You be set free. Just tell folks no. You're always doing stuff for people. You, you, I can't serve God for you. No, you need to go get it for yourself. Isn't that what, what they told him? Get it for yourself. And then the Bible says, and while the five foolish virgins went to buy, you mean to tell me you knew where to go get the oil the whole time? How many people live like that? They know where to get answers. Uh, they know where to get deliverance. Uh, they just rather borrow from you. But them five wise virgins, they said, no, 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 no. You got to go get it for yourself. He got that ax head for himself. The prophet didn't go get it. Your pastor's not going to get it, friend. God will use your pastor. God will use leadership and headship and ministers in here to create the miracle. But to complete the circle, you've got to get down and you've got to grab it for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when he did that, he took it for himself and God was able to help him again. Now, the Bible doesn't go into detail. We can only use our imagination. I always use mine. And I can just imagine him grabbing that iron and say, you know what, Pastor, I didn't realize how loose this was. I'm going to make sure to tighten this thing down. Hey, we got more trees to cut. I know I'm coming, but I need to tighten this down. Oh, I'm coming. The tree is it's, it, the tree ain't going nowhere. But I want to make sure the next time I strike a blow to the tree, I chop it down. 
I want to chop this thing all the way down so that I can build for God. I got to chop pornography all the way down. I got to chop divorce all the way down. I've got to chop debt all the way down. I've got to chop fruitlessness all the way down. And my edge must be fit. It must be sharp. Here we go. And chop it down. That's what we need to do tonight. That is the winning position, beloved. That is the pole position. I need to chop this thing down so that I can have victory and build what God has called me to build. Can we bow our heads tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. I know it wasn't a shout me down kind of sermon. But you know, sometimes we just got to talk about some things. Because there's some of us that are in a losing position. It's high time for you to get back where you belong. You don't belong there, beloved. You do not belong there. You need to get back to the winning position that God has for you. And so with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, Christians, help me pray. I want to I wanna deal with some things tonight. There are people here you're not saved. If you were to die tonight, heaven would not be your home. And I tell you, friend, that's a losing position. I'm not talking about what you know. I'm not talking about how good you are. Thank God that you're good. But that's not enough. It's not enough to be good. You need to be saved. Jesus did not say in the book of John, unless a man is really good, he will not enter the kingdom of heaven. No, he said, unless a man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of heaven. We must be born again, friend. This is the miracle. Where did things go sour? Where did, where did life spin out of control? You need to look at it. You need to face it. This is who I am. This is what I really am. Forget the avatar that I put on social media. Forget the Photoshop pictures. Forget the image that I want the world to see. God, this is who I really am. And friend, it is right there where God can set you free when you're real with him and when you're real with yourself. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled the Lord all night long and God pinned him down and he said, tell me your name. He said, I am Jacob. He screamed out in agony and pain. And the moment he told God who he really was, God changed his name. There are people here tonight, you got the wrong name. You're not meant to be a liar. You're not meant to be a thief. You're not meant to be a con artist. You're not meant to be a whoremonger. You're not meant to be, a, you, you, that's not who you are. But you've got to come clean with God tonight. Sin has gripped you. Sin has ripped you off. It's ripping you off. It's violating you. No more. You can be set free tonight if you come clean for God. With every head bowed, every eye closed, backsliders, non-believers, if you're not saved, you're backslidden. Listen, beloved, you need the forgiveness of God. Let him set you free. I want to pray for you tonight. You lift your hand with me all across this place. Pastor, will you pray? Yes, brother. I see that hand. Will there be any others? Yes, brother. Will there be any more? Hands going up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up so I can see them. Glory to God. Hold them up. Hold them up. Don't look at your friend. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. You are going to stand before God. Hallelujah. Hold them up. God bless you. God bless you. Will there be any more? God bless you. God bless you up in the top. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you raise your hand, I want you to come. Will you come? You come here. We're going to pray. You come and kneel at this altar. We're going to pray. You slip out of your seat, brother. We're going to pray for you. You come. You come. We're going to the winning position tonight. We've been losing too long. The losing is over. Now I'm going to take the pole position. Now I'm going to take the number one spot. Now I'm going to be in position with the Holy Spirit uh, that I can run the race set before me uh, and win without incident. Because that's who God is. Hallelujah. I want to be in position. I want to be in the pole position. You come. Come. 
People are going to meet you here at the altar. They're going to pray with you. They're going to believe God for you. Hallelujah. But you know, those that are unsaved or backslidden, listen church, they're not the only ones that are in a losing position. We as believers, if we're not careful, beloved, things can become loose. Things can become shaky. We can lose our edge. We're supposed to be on the edge for Jesus Christ. We can lose that if we're not careful. Perhaps you're struggling in your ministry or struggling in your marriage or, you know, you're not out and out sin and, and doing unrighteous things necessarily. But if you're not careful, if you're not watching, you can become carnal. You can become very blasé or very passive about convictions. And listen, beloved, the devil is very patient. He will wait and he will wait and he will wait until you're just right, just weak enough for him to come and take over. Don't let that happen, brother. Don't let that happen, sister. Don't create a doctrine out of your frustrations. I'm doing the right thing. Yes, amen. You're doing the right thing, Christian. But is the axe head loose? Are you working with faulty equipment? There are people here tonight, you're frustrated. No matter how hard I try, is the edge sharp? Have you been keeping it sharp? Is it loose? Does it need to be tightened with correction? Does it need to be tightened with d uh, dominion and prayer and devotion? Tonight is your night. Say, God, there's some things that I need to get right with you. I need to settle tonight. These altars are open for everyone to come. Let's get it fixed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get it fixed tonight. Victory is our portion. Victory is a choice. It is our portion tonight, but we must surrender. We must surrender, beloved, if it's going to change. If things are going to change, hallelujah, help us tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get into winning position by the grace of God. The mercy and the favor of God bless your people tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your time, Jesus. This is your time. This is your moment. Hallelujah. Father, that we don't rely on our own strength, but we rely upon you, the author of and the finisher of our faith. God, I pray the dignity of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I pray your covering and your mercy tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, God, your Holy Spirit, God, be upon us and your mercy. God, have your way, Lord God. It's precious people. If you are not at the altar, would you stand, glory to God, and worship with us? Found in your name. Found in your name. I never strayed. Found in your grace, your faithfulness, faithfulness, in my fortress, set over and over, and over. Yeah. With all your heart, come on.
Let's tell the Lord we love him tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Oh. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Yeah. Worship you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The winning position is our responsibility, beloved. God will create the miracle. God will bring the deliverance. But as I said before, deliverance is his part. Dominion is yours. Amen. But he told us before he left earth, he said, I will send you a comforter. Amen. I will send you a comforter who will guide you into all truth. The Bible later says the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Very interesting. That word comforter in the Hebrew is Nehemiah. And we all know what Nehemiah did. He built the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Very fascinating thought. After the Babylonian captivity, the children of Israel were free, but the walls were still crumbling down and they needed Nehemiah. They needed the comforter to rebuild the walls. See, you need the Holy Spirit. There's people here, you, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? You're free, man. I prayed at the altar. I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah, but there's still some crumbling going on. There's still some walls torn down that only the comforter can build. And he can do it. For man, it took man 52 days. Holy Spirit can fill you right now. You don't have to wait. Amen. You ain't got to wait to June. That's about 52 days from now. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost right now. There are people you are not part of the Mitchell Plains congregation. You're part of Macassar. You're part of Atlantis. You're part of, you're part of these, different, these different churches. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. And I tell you, it's a gift. Jesus said, if, if a child asks for bread, will his father give him a stone? Will he give him a serpent? And Jesus Jesus said, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven give to you the Holy Spirit if you ask for it. Amen? So I want to pray. I want to believe God. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're up top or whether you're down here, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I want to pray for you. I want to believe God. Now, how many Holy Ghost Christians I got up in here tonight? How many I got? Amen. Don't talk about it. Be about it now. How many, how many Holy Ghost Christians I got in here? Now, those of you that are not filled with the Holy Ghost, keep your hands up. You raise your hand. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are surrounded by people who are. And so listen to me, brothers. Listen to me, sisters. Listen to me, pastors. There's pastors here. We're going we're gonna to believe God. We're going to pray going to lay hands on these people and believe God for them to be filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now, I done, I done took this to prayer. Me and, me and the Lord, we talked about this years ago, and we both agreed that I'm not coming down there and reaching in your mouth and wagging your tongue around. Okay, we personally believe that's gross. I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do and what my brothers and sisters are going to do is we're going to pray and we're going to ask God that God would fill you with his spirit and God is going to speak into your life his words. What you need to do is be faithful and repeat them. So I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. Let God have his way. Tonight's message was all about surrender. The boy was able to get the axe head back because he surrendered. It's all about surrender tonight. 
you surrender to the Lord God will put his word on you you speak it out there's pastors in the building amen you come behind your people come behind these folks we're going to pray so I want to pray with you and then I'm going to pray for you can you say amen amen so if you've come here to be filled with the Holy Spirit I want you to lift your hands with me both hands I want you to lift them up hallelujah amen brother I want you to lift them up and I want you to pray this prayer with me and then we are going to lay hands on you and believe God to fill you with this spirit lift your voice and say it with me say Lord Jesus I thank you tonight that I am born again and I ask you now to bless me with the gift of speaking in tongues fill me with the Holy Spirit I have been sealed by the blood now fill me with your spirit in Jesus name amen come on church let's pray right now hallelujah yes yes give him glory speak it out hallelujah don't be afraid, sister. Lift your voice and give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Open your mouth and give him glory. Yes. Yes, give him glory. Hallelujah, fill them with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost fire of God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Touch my brother. Don't be afraid, brother. Give him glory. Lift your voice. Give him glory tonight. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid, brother. Lift your voice. Give him praise. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yes, give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Give him glory right now. That's right. Give him praise. Give him praise. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid, brother. Give him glory. Hallelujah. I pray. Yes, yes. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Touch my brother right now. In the name of yes. Give him glory. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, give him glory, little man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be afraid, sister. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, the rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. He's worthy. Don't be afraid. Lift your voice and give him praise. Lift your voice and give him praise. Lift your voice and give him praise. Come on, church, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. There were several people that got filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can feel God, man. God is in the building. Amen. And listen to me, brother. This brother right here. Right here. Your head is bowed. You're not looking at me right now. You got a, you got a gray hoodie on. Right here. Right here. I don't know your name, brother. I never met you before, but I want to let you know. This is just the beginning. 
This is just the beginning, man. You belong in the fellowship of the beloved. Okay? You need to stop telling yourself that you deserve all the things, all the evil that has happened in your life. You need to stop that. You need to stop that. Oh, I deserve to go through what I'm going through. No, no, you're a child of God. You're a child of God. You've been redeemed. Walk in that. It's a gift. You can't earn it. Just accept the gift and let God continue to bless. This, this is just a scratch in the surface. Okay? Let God be God in your life. You walk out of this building tonight with your head held high because you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not believe. Okay? God loves you. You hear me? God loves you tonight. God loves you. How many people were filled with the Holy Spirit tonight? I want you to raise your hand. You got filled with the Holy Ghost in here. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Now, listen to me. The first time I got prayed for to get filled with the Holy Spirit, I did not speak in tongues that first time. You know, I was actually kind of scared. I was like, oh man, am I going to hell now? <laughs> and my pastor's like, no. You know, he said, no, no, no. In the book of Acts, he began to explain to me. I went home and I read the book of Acts. He told me to read chapter two. I read the whole thing. Uh, but I remember reading it. It's like, oh, as the spirit gave them utterance. And so what I begin to do is I begin to pray. Say, God, give me the utterance. God, I will listen for your utterance. And when you give it to me, God, I will not be afraid. I will not be ashamed. I will speak it out. And I want to say about maybe three or four weeks later, we're having Sunday morning service. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I said, I'm not leaving this building until I speak in tongues. You know, and we're getting ready. And I said, I know they're going to do the slow song. And I know after they do the slow song, the song service leader is going to say, let's give God praise. And I'm just going to go for it. And my heart's going like this, you know. And then let's give God praise. And I just remember just lifting my voice and say, God, fill me with the." And I never got the whole sentence out. I just, God, fill me with the rabbi shigara and just went off. Hallelujah. And so pray for that. Ask God. God, give me the utterance of speaking in tongues. Give it to me. Because God wants to. He wants to fill you with his spirit. And for those of you that were filled tonight. Hallelujah. This ain't the end. This is the beginning. Just like you learned. Amen. How to speak English. Just how you learn how to speak Afrikaans. You had to develop that language. We have prayer meetings in the morning. We have prayer meeting before service. You can go home and pray tonight. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. The angelic gift. The angelic language. A direct line. Huh? Wi-Fi ain't got nothing on tongues. Oh, it ain't got nothing on tongues. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues. Just, just begin to. Paul said, I will pray in the spirit and in the understanding. Every time you pray, speak in tongues and give God glory. Can you say amen? We being filled with the Holy Spirit will give us the winning position. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but we have the comforter. We have the helper with us. Can you say amen? It's like, man, I wish I was in the Bible days. They walk, they walk with Jesus. Yeah, me too. But you know what? Jesus hooked us up. We may not walk next to him, but he walks in us. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He's in us. His Holy Spirit with us. Glory to God. And I thank you so much for letting me pray for you. Amen. Revival's not over. Amen. Revival's not over. We're going to have a Holy Ghost time the rest of this week. Amen. What I want you to do, you fill with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go and tell people what God has done in your life. Bring people to church tomorrow. Let's have a Holy Ghost time. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise together as your pastor comes tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many appreciate that this evening? Would you give God praise? Hallelujah. Touched by God. Again, tomorrow evening, once again, 6.30 prayer, 7.30 service. You don't want to miss it. Be in the house of God. Amen. God can speak to you. What a word tonight. Can you say amen? amen? Think about everything that was spoken tonight. God, what got me in the problems that I'm in, God, but I'm going to change that around. And I want to say something. You'll go forward. 
By the grace of God, can you say amen tonight? All right. We're going to bow our heads this evening and our hearts tonight with our heads bowed. Amen. Pastor Cheslin, lift your voice, close in prayer. Amen. The Lord bless you tonight.